Now let's look at our tools in the middle of our screen. Tap on the text tool and then tap anywhere on your screen to type. I'm tapping off to the right hand side of the screen near where the one and five are for my pages, but notice it automatically left aligns for me to type. That's because when you use the text tool, it's automatically gonna go to the left. If you fill up an entire line of text, it will auto wrap to the next line. So if you decide to type your notes, you do not have to think much about it. It's very similar to a word processing program, but you can also draw a text box on the screen. To do that, tap on the text tool a second time and toggle on draw text boxes. Then you can draw a text box anywhere on the screen and be able to type into it. This text can now be positioned anywhere on your paper that you would like for it to go. You can also resize the text box if needed. as well. When you're typing text, notice above your keyboard, your first options on the left are indent options, and you can turn something into a checkbox as well. You have your different options for changing your font type, your font size, your font color, bold italics are underlined, and then you can also set up with the ABC font favorites so that you don't have to come back and change these every single time. The last option is the bulleted list, so you can create different types of lists or outlines as well. The second option is your pen tool. If you tap on your pen tool, it will go to the last settings that you set. To update those settings, if you tap on the pen tool a second time, you can change the type of pen you are using, the width of the pen, and the color. If you swipe to the left or to the right in the um, color panel, you can add your own colors as well beyond the default colors that are set. Your first option is the ballpoint pen. So if I select that and I write, no matter if I press down harder with my stylus, the thickness of that stroke remains the same. Whereas if I change to the fountain pen, I can control the thickness of the stroke depending on how hard I push down on the screen. The next option is your highlighter tool. Your highlighter tool has the same options for a ballpoint highlighter and a fountain highlighter. Color options are the same. You can pick from the default colors or from your colors, and you can also change the thickness. Something that was just added recently in Notability is that the highlighter used to mark up in front of the text. Now, once you highlight, it will go behind whatever you are highlighting. So I can change my highlight color and then once I highlight the note, that highlight is going behind the text. So your text, hello, this is my note, still remains crisp. Whereas the old version would put the highlight on top of the text. So you can kind of see the difference there. You can really tell it on pen markings. So here's the highlighter with my pen. The highlighter is behind it. And if I revert to the old method, now you can see, especially up here on this T, the highlight used to be on top of everything. So if you like the highlight on top, if you tap on the three dots in the upper right hand corner, tap info, you can change how your highlighter is. The new version, the highlight goes behind 
the old version, the highlight is on top. So it's a personal preference there. The next option is your eraser tool. If you tap on your eraser tool a second time, you have thicknesses of your eraser that you can choose from, as well as what type of eraser you are using. So the whole eraser would erase an entire stroke that you have drawn. So for example, if I tap on anywhere of this pink in the hello, this is my note option, it's gonna erase that entire stroke. Whereas if I change to partial, it will only erase where that circle is. So if I needed to just erase a portion of my highlight or a portion of my pen, I can do that with the partial eraser. The whole eraser is the default, and if I go tap on any stroke, it's gonna erase that entire stroke without me having to erase portions. The next option are your scissors. The scissors is your cut tool. You have two options on how you are selecting. For your scissors, it can be a freeform drawing or a square rectangle. This allows me to select a portion of my drawing or a portion of my text. With the text, I can simply copy it. It will take a picture of that text and then now I can paste it anywhere. Or I can select a word or part of my writing and I can move that somewhere. I can also cut it, copy it, or if I use my fingers to um, pinch and pull out, I can resize that selection as well. So if you wrote something and you needed to move it to another location, you would be able to. The next option is the hand tool. The hand tool just allows you to um, move your page um, or move around on your page or move an object. If you're using a stylus, whenever you um, are using the pen tool or the highlighter tool, your one finger would move the paper up or down. If you are using your finger as a stylus, if you use two fingers, you'll be able to move around on the page without having to go to that finger option. And then the last tool that you see on there appears whenever you're screen sharing or um, displaying your device on an Apple TV, and that's a laser pointer. So this is going to show up as a laser pointer um, on the screen so I can point at different options like hello there or hi. So if I wanted to use Notability as a whiteboarding app to be able to record videos for my students or use it in the classroom to display as a whiteboard for my students, the laser pointer is going to allow you to point out certain aspects of the screen. The next two things we're going to talk about go back to the pen tool. So with the pen tool, I showed you the convert option. So if I select, tap on it to select it and choose convert to text, it'll give me a preview of what it thinks I'm writing. If I need to make a correction, I can tap on that area to correct it. And then I can say convert selection and it'll change it to text. Also, when we looked at the settings, we had auto shapes turned on and auto line. So if I draw a line that I think is straight, if I keep pushing and holding at the end, it's going to automatically change to a straight line. And notice that I can drag that line anywhere I need to and let go. So if I'm working with charts and graphs, that makes it nice. And then I also had auto shapes turned on. So if I draw something that looks like a circle and keep my mouse down, it's going to auto draw the circle. If I just draw it, it's not going to auto correct it. I have to keep my pen held down for that auto shape to take effect. And then now this is a shape object on your screen, whereas the one that did not auto correct is just a drawing. 
if you have a hard time drawing on um, a paper, whether it be something you import or even taking notes, what you can also do is many people on the iPad have an easier time drawing large and then putting it into a smaller location. So I can do that one of two ways. I'm going to go to page two. I can write hello, very big, then select it and resize it and put it where it needs to go. Or in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, there is a magnifier button. If you tap on that magnifier, which is your zoom, it's going to zoom into a portion of your screen. That box can be moved around to wherever you need it to go. It can also be resized. And at the bottom of your screen is where you would actually write. I'm going to change my thickness here. And notice it writes it in that smaller portion of your zoom box. If you keep writing past the white of this and go off into the blue onto the right, it will auto move the box. So if you needed to, your students could use this to write their notes or they can zoom into the page as well. So if your students needed to use this to write their notes, it would automatically move wherever it needed to go for them to continue writing. And as soon as they get to the end of the writing area, it wraps back around to the bottom. And then you can continue that on again. Your tools are also shown right above the Zoom box so you don't have to go all the way up to the top to use them. To get rid of this Zoom box, you can press on the Zoom button again or the um, off to the right of that, the three lines. You can drag that box and make it um, bigger on the screen or you can drag it off to completely remove it. You can also zoom in by pinching like we saw before onto an area of a page to write as well if you need to get into more detail. So those are all of the tools that you have available to you in Notability.